Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna look at making a foreign key that supports the cascade delete and update statements. You will enjoy this video and learn quite a bit. Let's do it. Let us begin learning about foreign keys. Notice that I'm using version 6.2. I have two tables I wanna create. One is a parent and one is a child. The parent table is quite easy. It's got two columns. The first column is an integer and my primary key. And it holds solid, liquid, and gas. The second table called child has three columns, item, matter ID, and a description. And what I would like to do is I would like to create a foreign key between the child matter ID and have it link up to the parent matter ID. So what I'm saying is I only want these three values in the child table. I never want more. Or if I add more to parent, then. But primarily, this is my set of abilities. So understanding the foreign key constraint is you pick your column, and then you pick your reference. Now, there are two rules that we need to know about. The first rule is the data types have to be identical. The second one is this column, the foreign key column, points to a primary key. This is the primary key. Now the primary key can also be a unique index instead of a primary key. But when we do the query to join these two tables, we just want a one-to-one -one relationship. So I would always try to keep it as a primary key and you won't have any problems. And on delete, cascade, on update, these are rules. And what this is saying is quite simple. When the parent data is updated or deleted, then the child date is updated or deleted. And that is what you need to know about cascade. Let's load the data. I'm going to do a create table command. I'm going to insert data. And first table is complete. I will do my second table, child. I will create the constraint with the two on key cascade and on update. So on the delete, I'm going to do cascade. And on update, I'm going to do cascade. Now there are some other types and you can intermix them. I'm just going to show you for the same type, cascade. So let's execute this alter table command that puts our foreign key constraint and then we will insert some data. And there we have that. We can now do some unit test. In our first example, notice that I'm gonna to try to insert into child where the matter ID is one. Well, if I look at the parent table here, notice one exists. In our second record, notice that the matter ID is four. Four does not exist. Foreign keys say, hey, I'm only going to allow data into a child that exists in the parent. Let's see this begin. We'll do a begin trans and do the first one. And notice that was successful. And then I will try to do this bottom one. And it will fail. It will fail because four is not present in the parent table. And that violates the foreign key. And let's roll this back. And there you have our first example. Remember when we created the constraint and we referenced this table, we set on delete cascade on update cascade. That's very important for you to remember that. So cascade means when the parent is either updated or deleted, notice that we're going to be doing the delete statement, then the child is deleted. So let's actually see this work. Okay. So here I'm going to show you the parent and the parent has one, two, three. I'm going to say delete from parent where the master ID is one. Now when it says child is deleted, let's look at the child record real fast. Notice it has a foreign key and its values are one. So this statement saying, Hey, this is also going to get deleted all these ones. Let's actually perform this statement. Notice that I'm inside of a begin transaction. Execute, and then I'm going to go look at the parent, 
And notice, one is gone. I'm going to go look at the child. One is gone. And that is the way the delete on the cascade works. I think you got it. In this example, we're going to be looking at the update cascade. Now the update cascade says when the parent is updated, the child is updated. So look at our statement, update parent set matter ID equals four, where matter ID equals one. Notice it says one here. We're going to change that to a four, but that has a foreign key with child. This column points at this parent. Remember, a foreign key points to the primary key. This is the primary key. And look, what are we going to do here? Well, these will be updated as well. So these should get the value four. Let's perform this test. Execute. Then let's go to our select parents. And notice one is now four. And in our child table, all the ones that were one are now four. And that is how the cascade update works. And there you have it. And there you have the foreign key with cascade, delete, and update. Very, very powerful commands. You should learn that and practice this. Now, if you're wondering, why do we use foreign keys? Well, it normalizes our data. It stops having repeated data spelled differently. And I'm sure if you have any experience at all, you've gone up against a table where one word is spelled six or seven different ways. Well, this right here will fix that. And it does. And there you have it, team. Well, I appreciate your support. You know, you register, you uh, subscribe, you send messages, and you do a thumbs up. I really do appreciate your support. And guess what? This video is over, but I'll see you back in my next video. Have a great week.